Hey guys, I hate to interrupt, but I just wanted to take a moment to say if you're studying for the CPA exams and you like the visual learning approach that we take in this video, definitely check out Universal CPA Review's free trial. You can do this by going to www.universalcpareview.com or you can click on the link in the description of this video. From there, you could take a sneak peek at Universal's platform, which includes animated video lectures, study guides, and practice questions with task-based simulations that come with video explanations that walk you through the solution step-by-step, -step, kind of like having a tutor by your side. Okay, enough of that. Let's get back to it. Okay, so we see that the stockholders' equity section falls within the balance sheet, but we also need to sort of conceptualize the fact that at the same time, stockholders' equity has its own statement. So the key difference between the balance sheet and the statement of stockholders' equity is that the balance sheet offers the financial statement readers the summary of an ending balance, right? So when you check your bank account in the morning over at J.P. Morgan Chase, you're going to look at the ending cash balance of that last transaction, right? If you take a screenshot of it on your smartphone, then that is your balance sheet in that moment. Okay, so that's what we mean when we say this represents a snapshot or a screenshot in time. Okay, whereas the statement of stockholders' equity instead represents a statement of changes of these accounts for the year. So this is going to include a few different accounts, and this is a statement that is often overlooked. And yes, we are going to break each of these line items out in detail as we go through this course, right? Because as we said, the name of the game here is going to be taking each line item in the balance sheet and dissecting it so that we can remember both where something is reported and how something is valued. Okay, so don't write this statement off because at the end of the day, when we go back into each of these line items throughout the rest of this course, and we're so focused with our heads down trying to understand these different calculations, right? We're going to be learning different methods for calculating treasury stock. We're going to be learning complex calculations for preferred stock, journal entries for issuing common stock, right? All that stuff. And it might be easy to forget about this statement. But remember, the calculation to all of these items is just question number two which is just addressing how these line items will be valued, but they could absolutely still test you on concepts related to where these line items will be reported, which is going to be in the statement of stockholders' equity. Okay, so let's dig into it. Here we go. All right, so when in doubt, map it out. We have four elements to the statement of stockholders' equity that we really need to drive home. Okay, and I'm not saying that this is everything you need to know about this statement, but it is going to be helpful to remember and sort of have this roadmap in your brain if you see a question or a task-based sim at the testing center. Okay, so the first stop in our roadmap is going to be contributed capital. Okay, so within the statement of stockholders' equity, contributed capital will be listed. And this can be anything from common stock, preferred stock, treasury stock, all the stock, right? So treasury stock is just purchasing back a company's own stock. Okay, we also have something called additional paid-in capital, and that's going to be in excess of the par value. So basically, contributed capital relates to investments made by owners. Okay, this is the total value of stock that shareholders have purchased directly from the issuing company, Okay, which can also include the company repurchasing its own stock in the form of treasury stock. All right, so this is when Joey's Pizzas go in public. They're issuing common stock and preferred stock to shareholders. This is where that's going to be reported as contributed capital. All right, so we're also going to see retained earnings. Okay, so the next two stops are going to be retained earnings, and accumulated other comprehensive income. All right, so we got to meet our twins. Let's start with retained earnings. So as we mentioned in our income statement lecture, after we calculated net income, that net income amount is going to be shifted over to retained earnings. And this is the amount that is potentially distributable to investors. And this can be made in the form of a dividend. All right, so a dividend would be reported in the statement of stockholders' equity. Dividend distributions are not presented in the income statement. Okay, real quick, how about the statement of cash flows? Okay, we were thinking dividends paid, financing section, dividends received, operating section. All right, we're talking about dividends paid from the company. Going to the financing section in the statement of cash flows, also going to be presented in the statement of stockholders' equity. So we got to remember, a contribution is when resources are added to this account, whereas a distribution is going to be when resources are distributed from this account. Right, that's generally going to be presented in the form of a dividend. It's coming out of retained earnings. Okay, so when you're thinking about net income, let's remember net income's twin. Okay, and that's their twin over in the statement of stockholders' equity, which is retained earnings. Okay, so let's pretend for a moment that Joey's Pizza's investors are taking a look at their financial statements 
and they take note of their total comprehensive income, right? They're going to notice this in the income statement. And we remember that total comprehensive income is different from net income because it also includes what's referred to as other comprehensive income, right? You remember the FUPI mnemonic. So if these investors are looking at total comprehensive income, at first glance, they might think, oh, great, we have all this money. This is potentially going to be distributed to us in the form of a dividend. This is a great investment. But when they shift their focus over to the statement of stockholders' equity, then they're like, wait a minute, why is retained earnings so low? Isn't that where the dividends are coming from? Okay, so then Joey's Pizza CFO is going to be like, well, technically not. Only net income is going to be shifted to retained earnings. You're looking at total comprehensive income. That also includes other comprehensive income items. The other comprehensive income items would be shifted over to accumulated other comprehensive income, okay, more generally known as AOCI. So this is going to be reported as a contra account in the statement of stockholders' equity. Okay, so financial statement readers might be like, well, that's not as great of an investment as I thought it was going to be because retained earnings doesn't seem to be as high as I thought. Okay, and the reason is because financial statements for Joey's Pizza are also going to include things like unrealized gains and losses. It's also going to include gains and losses on certain types of investments, pension plans, hedging transactions, right? We're thinking of our FUPI mnemonic. Okay, so that's ultimately going to be excluded from net income because gains and losses are sometimes yet to be realized. Okay, so what would the point of other comprehensive income even be? Isn't that just misleading? No, not technically, okay? Sometimes investors who are taking a look at the balance sheet like to review a company's other comprehensive income amount. Okay, and they sort of use this as an indicator or a red flag for upcoming threats to net income, right? If the company invested in the Indian rupee and the Indian rupee went down in value, that's an unrealized loss that is possibly going to affect net income and retained earnings once the currency transaction is sold and realized. Okay, so at the end of the day, all I'm trying to say is net income is getting shifted over to retained earnings, whereas other comprehensive income is getting shifted over to accumulated other comprehensive income. All right, so we're thinking about the twins. We have two sets of twins, net income and their twin retained earnings, OCI and their twin AOCI. Okay, so final stop in our mental map, we're going to briefly touch on this, but we're going to dig into it much more in detail a little bit later on, is the concept of non-controlling interest. So a parent company owns a subsidiary. This is the portion of equity ownership in that subsidiary that is not attributable to the parent company, aka those that have controlling interest. All right, so that's an ownership percentage that's greater than 50%, but less than 100%. All right, but like I said, we'll talk about this more in detail. Just note that NCI is going to the statement of stockholders' equity.